and do the outfit of the day. Well, if you're interested how to get from this to this, then please stay tuned and let's get started. Welcome loves to my YouTube channel. My name is Vasa Olga. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about dark eyeshadows, but this is going to be like part two in case you're interested how to blend out some eyeshadows that you applied too high to your crease. If you're interested, then please stay tuned and let's get started. I wanted to try out a new technique for my hair because I wanted to do this a little bit quicker than I always do. In my previous video, I showed you how you can do this with lots of blending and how to get like really dark eyeshadows, black eyeshadows, really close to your lash line and then gradually we were moving forward and placing this higher and higher to the crease. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different technique. I want to focus on something that has to be right away to the crease and then I'm going to be showing you how you can blend this out, make sure that it just doesn't really look bulky and it's really well blended and soft. And even black eyeshadows or like some other colors that are dark, they're going to look really pretty if you put a lot of blending in this process. We're going to get started right away. I did have camera my foundation and I promise that soon enough I'm gonna repeat the same steps um, on camera. We're gonna do like full get ready with me because I guess you really like my get ready's. Let me get started with NYX eye primer. You can use any eye primer. You can use even some concealer. So we have like a huge range of colors and today we're using Beauty Bay eyeshadow palette and I'm gonna get started right away. We have to set the primer. I'm gonna zoom you in. As per usual, we're going to be using some nude shade. I'm going to tap off and then just set my primer. It's not going to give any color because it's almost the same shade as your skin tone. Or maybe it can be like if you have rich and dark skin tones, um, you can use like really close to your skin tone, undertone shades or nude as well. It's not going to give any difference. We need some protection in case like any fallouts happen. Um, I can suggest you two options. The first option is to apply something over your crease, maybe soft shade. I'm not talking about setting the primer. I'm talking basically about super soft color that you want to see through as like some faded option. And uh, the second option is to go with like really bright eyeshadows first to your crease and then start blending. It depends on guys. If you feel comfortable in using first something as a transition color, then go ahead. If you don't feel that comfortable, then use something bright on top first and then go to this blending motion. I will be doing today threat. I'm going to be doing a threat color. It's not black but it's given enough pigment in my opinion. So it's gray and I want to mix gray with probably something like the shade. If it's, if I'm mistaken, it's Daffodil, Daffodil Delight. We have a huge blending brush and this is like the softest color. Well, you can work with big, fluffy, huge brushes if the color is really soft. If you're going to something like Threat from the same palette or black or like Stormy Night, well, believe me, it's not the best brush to go for. You can use some small, tiny brushes like that. I'm gonna start patting the color. So here it is, something that you should probably know if you have some eyeshadows that are not given pigment when you set your lid, then it's better to have some creamy base or some creamy products underneath, or probably you shouldn't set your primer if it's sticky, so the color is gonna stick to the primer. We're going right to the crease. We're placing this color to my crease, and I'm patting the color, and I'm not rubbing. It's too soon. We need the pigment first. So you can see here's like the huge difference between this technique and the previous one, because the previous was focused on really dark eyeshadows close to the lash line, and then gradually we were bringing the softest shade, and then back Back to the brow, it was almost white or some shimmers with no color on. Here you can create any shape. I would probably create a V shape. I believe the V shape is my style. I will choose a little bit darker shade to create this smooth transition. You can see that the line is really harsh. Now we need to choose some color that will go in between. It can be absolutely different shade. We can go to something green probably. I'm not sure that I'm like a huge fan of green, but Okay, let's do this green. It's dark and it's it's gonna look a little bit like, no, okay, let's go to this one. It has a medium shade. It's not really dark. It's not like smoky shade and it's not um, as bright as this one. So it's gonna give the nice transition in my opinion. If we don't like it, we're just gonna switch to a little different color. Now we have to grab some brushes that look like this. 
So they're short. They might be a little bit full and thick, pointy, small brush. Or some brushes like this that we use as a crease brush. These brushes have to be small and tiny. What is so important about this type of brushes they're not going to give too much surface right here for your color if you try to place it over your crease you can see that it's not bringing too much color to your brow bow and it's not bringing too much color underneath that is the main reason why we're going to focus on something like that i fell in love with this brush when i started like my journey with very smoky very bright eyeshadows and i wanted to keep them in place and i didn't want to drag them drag them out too much. I'm gonna go to the color Granny Smith and then what I do I just place it on top of the edge where my gray sheet stopped. You can see that we're instantly creating this nice transition from yellowy to something greenish and then we're going to this very bright gray. This brush is giving much more control than uh, you would have with uh, something big and, and, and fluffy. If you need to add a little bit more gray because we wiped off a little bit of this gray-ish color, then you can always go to the same brush that we used, the same protection as we did. A lot of blending and a lot of going back between both eyeshadows and between both brushes. I'm going to the same green one more time and then I would probably give it right here. And then with a little bit smaller, we used right at the beginning this big and fluffy brush. You can still use some fluffy brush, but I would go to something a little bit smaller. And I'm going to the same Daffodil Delight. Let me grab a little bit on my brush, tap off, and then I'm gonna place it on top of the green, but I'm not doing this really low. I'm focusing the shade mainly above my crease. I need a clean brush. I'm gonna wipe off any leftovers, any pigment, so it's not giving any pigment at all. But I will probably just go over my crease with this brush and I wanna smooth out any harshness that we might face. These colors are so messy. With even protection, I have so much fallouts underneath. We're gonna use my Beauty Blender. This one is wet and I'm gonna wipe off any color. This is the shade. And uh, I would need some tiny brush. And then I would clean a little bit my brow bow. And I would add the same shade in the inner corner. And then um, the Laura Lloyd. I don't really want to do anything black. It's been oh, so many times. I would do over my waterline some green pencil. You can tap this brown with a finger. So let me go to this brown. I don't want to do anything gray underneath. If you want to, go ahead. The color, this one I guess. Okay, Daffodilium. And with like a very small brush, I am going over the brown. I'm not bringing this really low. I'm, I'm focusing this on top of my brown. I would probably add a little bit of my liner. But you know what? I'm going to show you what I do to smooth out this black line. I will place those gray on top of my black line. Now I need some mascara. This one is from Essence and I've been using this one for ages. I look weird and bizarre and I know that, guys. We're going to put everything in place. I do two coats of mascara. Well, here it is. I will do the left eye. Yes, probably for my shorts. And then we're gonna conclude the video and do the outfit of the day. Guys, the makeup is on. I would put on some lip gloss. I don't really wanna do anything matte. I guess we have a lot of matte. That's why I wanna add a little bit of this like really soft pink lip gloss. Now I'm gonna take off this weird ponytail. Well guys, so today I'm going to be using a little bit more of this blue shirt and you would say probably like, girl, do you have anything else but this blue shirt because you filmed this live in so many videos with this shirt, but I just want to show you how you can style one piece in multiple options. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put on this black jeans, one of my favorite jeans actually. I'm going to tuck in this blue shirt and uh, of course it is so boring. But uh, don't worry, I have something really cool for you guys. I was playing around with lots of my stuff and clothes, so this is the coat. And it's boring. It's boring and I hate this part. It's just like it's too loose. I'm gonna grab the corner of this coat. 
Though it's not going to work with every single piece. Like some coats, they're not working this way. It's not even a coat. It's some sort of jacket. It's really warm. It's really thick. The fabric is so thick. Um, so what I put, I do it this way. I actually picked this from Trini. Um, she's a stylist and she's from London, if I'm not mistaken. Not really sure. I just, I am subscribed and I really love her videos. I want to make sure that I still have this really nice round shape from both sides. So I'm going to do it this way. The main piece of this whole look is going to be belt. It's just how, and I would probably lose one shoulder and live it this way. So we have a belt. This belt has a lot of, um, not a lot, but it has some gold. And I was thinking like black is looking really cool with us because it's just like I have some uh, design, like black design over this jacket. And I was thinking like probably I would need a little bit of gold here. I will try to accessorize this a little bit more. I was thinking about my favorite boots. So stay with me, guys. Well, I haven't ordered the black boots yet. So they're still probably like in my car. That's why. I will try this with my favorite boots. What? <gasps> what? Guys, then tell me that this is not the coolest outfit you've ever seen. And it's just like with blue shirt. I'm not sure that this look is going to be really pretty with lots of print in this area because we added these boots. These boots need to be simplified with something blue and uh, I love the waist I love the belt with the waist I love this gold and I don't really think that this gold is too much and I don't really think that we need anything but we would probably need to top something with this gold I love that it's given the shape I love that it drapes where my left shoulder is I just love the whole concept though I need to style and accessorize I don't know why guys I will try out for you so this is gold this is gold with this outfit and with this belt it works but I don't really think that silver works this is the final result with these boots with these coat and the belt and everything so it would be so boring if I wore just the plain uh, shirt and then some jeans. Okay guys, that is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial. I believe this is it for today and tomorrow I will probably film and get ready with me. So stay tuned if you're interested. We're going to be trying out some new outfits. We're going to be doing some new stuff together and I'm going to see you in my next video guys. I love you so much. Bye bye.